talking uh, as we were, uh, we were looking at the uh, Sly Flourishes Lazy Games Master prep, uh, the return of the Lazy Games Master, uh, or Dungeon Master, officially as the title of the book is. And now we're going to actually apply that into the game that we play on Monday. So our Monday game on Infinite Monkey Tales started off as a text-only game at the beginning of lockdown when all of us thought we were going to have loads more time to run these kind of things. Turned out it didn't work and I made the suggestion that we take it and finish it up and finish up the, the episode um, as a... Hang on. Muted. I'm not muted. You're muted. <laughs> you can mute me and just don't look at the maps. Uh, thanks for the thanks for the lurk. Um, so yeah, we are um, we are uh, started off with a completely fictional, made up. Um, but it was my own custom map. It was it was the, my own adventure. Um, but then everybody said they really enjoyed it, and they wanted to continue. And I was like, well, I had two thoughts at that point. The first one was, I don't have another set of games in me. I can't. I don't. I just can't prep two unique homebrew games. Uh, I'm not that experienced. I haven't got that much time. Um, I don't want to do it a disservice. And what I also had was a bunch of salt marsh stuff that I was given for Christmas one year, and I thought I'd love to use that. I'd love. I've only used a tiny bit of it. I'd love to use the campaign and see how it goes. Um, so that's what we did. Um, and I, and we turned it into an Eberron campaign. So it's it's salt marsh. It's Eberron. Um, which I think by default it is. Um, and so I'm spending a bit of time learning about Eberron. Um, and uh, hopefully the players will, will spend some time learning about Eberron too. Uh, but we're in <laughs> we're in the salty backwaters, the grimy, the grimy, grimy uh, backwaters um, uh, down south. We don't even really have like fixed um, fixed geography. I don't exactly know where everybody is in this game. Um, I don't know, like, in terms of geography, where the kingdoms are in Eberron. I don't know where they are. But anyway, I believe that we're in Eberron, and I've told the players that. So we're having a look at that. Um, and we're looking for we're looking for exciting... Um... Hey, Elvin Carey, thank you very much for the host. If you're there, hello, hello. Hope you had a good stream. Hope your D&D went well. Um, shout out for Elvin Carey. Oh, and the raid too. Thank you very much for the raid. Um, shout out for Elvin Carey. How did it get on? How did you go? Yep, you're playing D&D. &D, I thought so. Good. I hope it went well. Uh, we've been talking about, uh, in the first hour, we were talking about this this book. Um, which is a Lazy Dungeon Master's Guide, an absolutely fantastic guide. So we can check out the video there. And if you haven't already, please do check out this book. Um, it's awesome. Uh, and we're now moving on to prep for my Monday game, which is this one. So if anybody is currently playing through any elements of the Ghosts of Salt Marsh, please look away unless you're already far through it because we are still in like the first part of it. So it's not a big deal. Um, you've probably already completed it. And uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome to Infinite Monkey Tales. We normally play games on Friday, but today we are not due to various scheduling issues that we have, but also just because of uh, the number of games that are being played. Uh, and I stepped up and said, I will do some prep on stream. I need to do prep anyway for Monday. So let me do that. And then after the prep for Monday, about 40 minutes from now, what we're going to do is I'm going to set up a rerun, I th think. I never actually thought about this. Is it still available for a rerun? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Didn't actually plan that much. Anyway, the idea was that we were going to have a look at the um, old D&D uh, &D campaign to try and get us all up to speed as to where we are with the D&D &D campaign. We might just have to do it via YouTube or something. That might be the way we do it. Um, which means you'll have me for a bit longer because I'll be doing some commentary on it. Uh, didn't think of that. Anyway, so, 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 moving on. Um, we're currently... We are currently out in a boat. Um, if anybody has ever played Potential Rerun, <laughs> you can't upload them anymore, can you? 
I don't think you can do that with Twitch anymore. You used to be able to upload videos. You're on a boat. We're on a boat. We are on a boat. Now, what's happened so far, um, just to set the scene, the players and the characters, uh, we've got Elior, who is an elven fighter specialising in ranged weapons. Um, we've got Eloria, I see if I'm getting these names right, um, who is an elven rogue. Um, we've got our newest player, um, who is a triton and has only been in one game so far. Possibly two. Um, Sal, Sal, I'm going to have to look. Samira. <laughs> Samira. Um, and then we've got Melandra uh, and Owen. Um, Melandra is... Ezimar. And is... A sorcerer? Hey, okay. A sorcerer. That's Angie's character. <laughs> so this is this is the first part of, of Michael Shea's uh checklist that I'm kinda of going through in a slightly different yeah. It's what who are our NPCs? Um Yeah, so this these are the characters that we've got to play with on Monday. Um I almost nailed it. Almost. <laughs> I wasn't very confident. So we're review so we're reviewing the characters. Here's the checklist here. Um and we're doing this section here, which is review the characters. Uh so we're going to work through this this checklist. And this is what we're doing, the lazy dungeon master checklist. So review the characters. Thus proving that review the characters is important. Yeah, for sure. And the great thing about Roll Twenty is it's actually really easy to, to review the characters. Samira is a new character. Samira just joined us um, and uh, is a triton, which I've never encountered before. This is actually a beautiful drawing that's been done by the player. Um, and so this is a, this is a unique and uh, awesomely brilliant uh, if I can zoom into it. Uh, there we go. There's the, there's the lovely art that's been done there. Lovely drawing. So that's me, and she's she is uh, she's a trickster for sure of the sea. Um, her backstory as a barbarian is that she's been travelling with a purveyor of magical goods. Um, she was picked up in the sea after a rather unfortunate incident with her homeland, um, and she was picked up in the sea, and she immediately felt at home with these travelling sellers of ma magical items. Um, and found herself in Salt Marsh, where she met the the rest of the crew. Um, and you know how it is when you're introducing, you know, you know. Um, yeah, that is Jessica. Uh, if you would like any uh, commissions, and go into the Infinite Monkey Tales channel and give um, give Jess a shout, and she'll give you give you a fair good price for her awesome awesome artwork. I am sure. I think she is taking commissions right now. So give her a shout if you want anything done. Um, uh, okay, so uh, yeah, Samira. Um, she is a barbarian, and she is currently, she is currently positioned under the boat, so she can breathe underwater. Um, she can breathe underwater, and she is placed under the boat, and she is currently smashing the side. There she is. There she, although she looks like she's on the boat, um, it turns out that she's actually kind of under under it there, um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What they don't know is that there's lizard people in this boat. So I really hope that Angela's gone and Mark and Russ and Jess and SBC, all of you guys, um, you definitely should be not watching this. Uh, so what's happened is they're busy. Samira's trying to haul the boat and the rest of them, quite frankly, because we we missed Ollie. Ollie wasn't there as a um, because... Russ was in hospital, so we we didn't play um, that character. I took her along, kept her out of trouble, made some rolls that were very bad rolls, but kept her alive. 
Um, but what has happened is the other thing that, that Samira has done is she's cast an absolutely massive, ginormous, impregnable, impervious fog cloud on the mast, which has a 20 foot uh, radius, um, approximately. Uh, kind of like that, you know, give or take. 20, 20 foot radius uh, fog cloud, which has blinding capacity on the players. And that's a bit of an unfortunate situation because <laughs> they, they managed to roll uh, some good deception rolls. So these people currently on the boat think that it's a bit of a joke between the big bad who they've offed now. So they've got, well, he wasn't the big bad, the big, big bad. He was just a big enough bad to give them some trouble and down one of them. Um, uh, so yeah, so th these guys are, these guys are currently, um, looking a bit lost. They don't quite know where to go, but I think that's because their rogue hasn't been in play. A medium bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> early, early bad. Um, so this rogue wasn't in play and I wasn't making her do things like opening doors and getting into trouble because if she had, then she would have found that there was stuff going on out with the fog cloud or she snuck up the stairs um, and onto the decks, all this kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, early to bad, early to rise. Er early to bad, er yeah, early to be reincarnated as a skeleton. Um, so this is the boat that they're on. Um, uh, we've got a druid, a fighter, a sorceress, a rogue, and a triton barbarian. Um, they're all level two, and they are currently in a bit of a sticky wicket. So the strong start, the strong start that we're going to hit, so back to lazy DMs again, because we were talking about that, create the, create the strong start. The strong start, really is something like you were on a boat. There are nu numerous unknown pirates alongside you on the deck. There is a fog cloud 20 meters in diameter. You cannot see anything, but you can hear noise. You can hear people talking. You have heard the strange tones of a magic user cursing her brother for creating such a terrible trick upon you all. You get a sense that not all is well and that your deception will probably only last you for a short amount of time. You've already unloaded some of the cargo, offering to help with the smuggling. Samira, you're underwater. There's a hole in the boat. It has taking on water. The people that you see frantically trying to hole it up, they're not working. The hole is too large. The water too strong. The boat will soon sink. What do you do? Something along those lines will be my strong start for Monday. So that's not bad. They've got enemies. They're blind. And at least one of the party realises that the boat's about to sink. That's because she's been hacking at it for the past 10 minutes. Um, so that's a strong start. Uh, that, that, should, that should probably work. Uh, so the next part of the guide is what are the potential scenes that might come up? Now, because we're using a scripted adventure, this is, this is still not to say that the players will not do something completely mad. And I am, I am prepared to improvise. I am ready for them to knock my plan. So I don't want to spend a huge amount of time creating scenarios for them. Scenario number one. Probably Ollie will sneak about, open a few doors and discover a group of lizard folk. Quite what will happen after that? I don't know, but that's the scenario. Scenario number two. Somebody on the boat realises that not all is well. Somebody on the boat realises that this shouldn't be happening. Somebody questions the new arrivals.
that potentially that potentially could lead to combat potentially or it could lead to some some other deception rolls maybe don't know possibly um they're going to go downstairs that's a possibility um and the scenario there would be they would actually meet people um who were equally blinded i guess by this 20 radius sphere because it radiates downwards it's a sphere after all and it goes through the gay rates on the deck um so things will happen there um that could be combat that could just be not because they can't see anything down there but there are people there and they're frantically trying to hold up the ship as it's taking on water so there could be some action happening down there um there is a captain on the ship and there is a magician on the ship um there could be things with them that occur particularly confronting the players um so that's an that's a potential scenario there if they get up onto um if they get up onto the poop deck up there i think that bit's the front of it in it that's the way ships work um so we've got that happening and a potential fight now the ship is going down as it stands because it's been holed um and i given i told the players it's going to take an hour for it so they've only got an hour to get off uh so other potential scenarios is they get off the boat and they make it away while the ship sinks whether or not everybody is still alive on it or not i don't know but but that's that's for them to figure out um the other type of scenario that would then occur would be that they're back on shore and they find themselves um that's interesting my map titles haven't loaded uh, but they find themselves back in the town. Um, and they find themselves back in Salt Marsh. The windlass above, uh, the rudder astern, front to the left. Okay, that's maybe useful. <laughs> if I can remember it. Uh, there is guidance and stuff on the boat as well. There's notes, um, so I'll, I'll read through them. Um, so other scenarios, they managed to they managed to complete the uh, they managed to complete that particular session, that particular part of it, um, and they go back and they get their rewards. They speak to the council. They maybe check out some other stuff that they've done. So in that case, the scenarios become what's in the book. At least some of the possibilities become. Yeah, so you've got the main deck, the poop deck, the forecastle, galley stores, ship stores, ship's galley, lizard quarters, quarters, captain's cabin, crew quarters, cargo hold. Um, yeah, and various other stuff going on. Oh, they might also search the ship. That's one thing I forgot to mention. I have to remember that. They might also search the ship and find stuff. So another scenario is they find something that's secret. Excuse me. <laughs> you can't get away without good lizard quarters they're just sitting there chilling at the moment there is actually some lizard folk machinations involved um, so the conclusion the conclusion basically is that they're trying to render the seagoing side of the operation inoperative um, so how they quite do that is up to them but that's what they're tasked with that's their current objective and they will do it I'm sure they will do it um, they might also find out some secrets. There are secrets that are, that are happening. I'm not going to mention them necessarily, uh, but one of them involves lizard folk, and one of them also involves smuggling, and another involves a prison cell. Uh, but because this is a published adventure, the secrets are kind of easier to come up with because they're written down. Um, uh, but the way that you but by taking them off the page, by taking them off the written page and turning them into secrets, frees you up from the linear nature of the way that it's written. Page turning, page by page, number one to twenty. You don't, you don't know when they're going to find out about the secret room. They might find out about it because they torture somebody. They might find out about it because the rogue is invisible and is sneaking around, listening to people and watching them. You don't know. So don't make it all dependent on a, a D20 check of the room when they're down there. There could be other ways. Is it important they find that thing out? Do you think it'll be fun if they find things out? If so, convert it to a secret and then use that secret at any point get that, that you might think is, is appropriate for them to pick it up. So that's just going there. So the conclusion of it, 
There's a whole bunch of stuff that they find out. Um, they should be able to deduce. They should be able to deduce. And I really double check, guys, anybody who is playing this game on Monday, if you have been listening so far, that's OK. But you must not listen now. So please tune out. Turn mute the stream. Um, just just don't listen because this is a major spoiler. And Keen knows you've you've maybe played it, Keen, already. It's quite possible. <laughs> so the the next thing that happens is that they learn um along with that you've run it, yeah. Um so the lizard folk are planning an attack. But we don't know necessarily where. Um, but they're going to probably take this information too. So that's another secret they're going to have to find on the boat somehow. Um, maybe, maybe that's through something that's written down that they interpret, or maybe it's through the the lizard folk that are there. There's enough points for them to pick up that particular clue. So they're going to have to find that out at some point. Um, the smugglers are apparently very successful, and they do particularly excel in selling stolen goods. Um, so they're going to get some rewards for that. Uh, if there's silk and brandy, then they're going to get reward. Okay, so they get they get reward for that. If they could, they could have taken the ship. I mean, they could have stormed it and taken it. That gives them a bit of downtime. So another scenario is going to be downtime. Uh, there are various rules for downtime in D and D anyway, so we can look at that easy enough. That's fine. Um, but there are also uh, specific salt marsh rules for downtime as well um, so I would need to just double check those to make sure that I'm prepared for that so that's okay that's just another scenario that's going to come up um, the next scenario is chapter 3 of the ghost of salt marsh um, and it involves the colony of lizard folk um yeah so the adventurers needed kind of thing yeah it's fine usual but there's no guarantees that the players will take this there's no guarantees that the players will want to do this so other scenarios that exist in my mind would be they're going to go and check the mine because there's been big talk about the mine uh, it, the d dwarven operations here are trying to turn this section of town into a very commercial, successful, rich and wealthy industrious area with the ports, with the mining. Um, they don't want, they don't want the 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 smuggling ring. Hence, why the adventurers have been told to break them up. Um, so they have had the talk of mines being dangled under them so it might be they want to go and investigate that they've also been told that there is a rather large store of wealth under the house that is currently occupied by the mining guild and it may be that they want to take that and have a shot at trying to steal that if they do that I don't know where it's going to end up <laughs> what's what's in that mine? I'm sure there's something wrong with it. <laughs> Let's go and find out how big how big that bad guy is. Ugh, they're good. So I managed to. St this is this was interesting about railroading. Um and and the the kind of theme park uh improv stuff. They had this whole town to explore, and I dangled stuff at all points to make sure that it looked like it was alive, to make sure it was interesting. Um, uh, but the one that they took was the one. That was written in the book. The adventure that was written in the book. If they hadn't, I wouldn't have bothered. It's not a problem. But they did. So we got to run it. Which was cool. There's no guarantees they'll do it twice in a row. <laughs> so, um, scenarios. Adventurers needed. Let's get sorted. 700 gold pieces will be offered um, as a reward. Um... Politics and lizard folk, rules of engagement, meeting the queen. So they, they don't necessarily need to go in and kill people. They could do it. So there's all sorts of role play shenanigans that could happen there. There's a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to have to read before Monday. Um, but I'm not really too worried about that just now. Um, I will be able to scan it. I get the gist of what's happening. It's fine just by looking at what's going on. So if I need to, I can improvise. But I'll get these scenarios written down. Um, 
as a kind of option. Uh, lizard folks. It looks like a pretty big settlement, actually. They're not going to be able to... So this will be quite interesting. There is... There's a map available. Okay. Um, I'll need to load up the... I'll need to load up the... Um, the maps for that, because they exist. I might as well use them. On roll 20. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of stuff. Throne room, banquet hall, barracks, stores. Chief shaman or shaman's living quarters. The shaman's quarters. Temple. A vestry. Nursery, hatchery, guard room, chief, barrack, sub officer quarters. Oh, there's a lot going on here. Royal bath, minister's quarters, queen's lounge, queen's living quarters. Okay, so there's a big map here with lots of stuff. Um, and they're going to have to try and solve the mystery. So what, what they do when they get there is kind of up to them. Um... Okay, I'm just reading the ending here. <laughs> uh, yes, there's a giant crocodile involved. Fantastic. Um, there are two possible primary outcomes, the book says. Um, if they've forged an alliance between Saltmarsh and the Lizard Folk, they receive 1600 XP. Um, if they made an earnest effort to impress the lizard folk but fell short, they'll get 1200 XP. Uh, we're using milestone leveling. A script to the end. Yeah, of course I did. I want to find out what happens. Then I'll go back and it'll make sense as to how it gets there. I need to extract the secrets out of them to know broadly what's going to, or where they're expected. But if it goes wrong and they try and fight, they're going to get killed. So hopefully they realise that, otherwise it's going to be a TPK. You don't walk into the... They don't, and they might not even... The thing is... Right, so here's the point. Yeah, you have to know... Yep. Yeah, you have to know how it ends. Um, the other point of this is that they might not go down this route immediately. Um, it might be that they don't go down the route for a couple of days. It might be a couple of sessions before they find this out. So I'm willing to give them that latitude. If they want to go and explore and do other things and chase up uh, stuff and we can have a bit of improv fun, fantastic. If that's what they want to do, I am not going to stop them from doing that. I'm not going to railroad them into this particular adventure. But I have this adventure. It actually looks fun. It looks different. They're not expected to go in there killing everything. It looks like it could be quite a lot of role play involved and persuasion and chats and... And it could be quite an interesting, could be quite funny, but particularly because we've got like a crazed barbarian um, in there who who probably knows about lizard people being a triton, maybe. So there's a secret. There's a secret. They, they, those lizard people know about Samira. They know about her. That could be cool. If they find that out at some point. Because they're, they're both aquatic creatures. So that would seem possible. That could be quite a nice twist to drop in. So as secrets go. That's not bad. Huh. Love secrets. Brilliant. Um, okay, so I think that's way more than enough for the players. We only play for two and a half, three hours at most. Um, so there's no way they're going to get through the ship encounter downtime and onto the lizard encounter on Monday. It's not going to happen. They, they're not that quick. And I'm not that real roady. Sometimes I am. <laughs> not, not tomorrow. Uh, not on Monday. Uh, okay, so we have looked at the scenarios. And we started to talk a bit about secrets and clues. Now, this is difficult, and I will have to write these down. Um, let me get a new item. I'll do it in roll 20. Uh, what's the date on Monday going to be? It's going to be the 7th. Seventh uh December 
not going to anybody's. It's just going to be, that's fine. Uh, okay. So, secret number one for the session on Monday. They're going to be on the boat to start with. There is a group of lizard folk on the boat. Two. There is a prison on the boat. Three. There is a secret stash on the boat. I'm having to write on the boat just to keep my brain right when we're actually there because we're going to be splitting it. Um, okay, those, those were easy ones. Um... The boat was going to be moving on to another town. That's a good secret to have. Um, the suggestion there, of course, being that their smuggling ring might actually be in existence in another town. Um, the boat, however... Um, they were going to be supplying arms to the lizard folk. Six. The lizard folk are likely to be planning an attack on something. Okay, this is where it gets a bit more interesting. I need to look back over the notes again. Uh, and I'll have a look. Let's have a look at this section on secrets here. Um, the, 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 sorry for the flicking page. Outline important NPCs. Up, up, up. Fantastic locations. Locations. Let's delve into secrets a bit more. Yeah. Um, Expand that a bit. So a piece of information the characters can discover is explore the world and interact with inhabitants. They're never trivial. They contain information that matters to the characters. They might be pieces of history. They might be leads and hints. They might be information about NPCs. A specific or secret or clue should never need to come from one particular NPC's mouth or from a single strange glyph or the keen edge of an ancient blade. You don't want to know how the characters might find them. So that's independent. They're just they're just statements. Uh, we have to improvise the discovery of a secret or clue while we run the game, and abstracting them works particularly well with mysteries. They aren't always revealed. Secrets aren't always revealed, so they might not find everything. But this is this deal about writing ten secrets down, uh, and then yeah, again, this is this is so true. You'll come up with the most interesting ones when you're racking your brain for the final few. Um, secrets only become real when they're, once they're revealed, so they're not actually part of the game unless the players tick them off. Um, and it might never happen, and it might never need to happen, the players never know if it needs to happen or not. Um, and this is the sort of thing that solidifies into, into quests. Like we said there, it, it's a clear idea there that if they find out that lizard folk, they find out about arms, they're going to find out that the lizard folk are planning an invasion, um, and there's a quest immediately for them to go on to. Um, so yeah, those are the, those are the secrets. Uh, write down 10 secrets. We're almost there. Secrets and clues are connected to tissue of campaign. Yep. We've, we're, but we're doing it backwards because we're extracting the secrets from, uh, from the campaign. Um, in this particular case, we're extracting it from, uh, this one. Um, okay. So they've got onto the boat. They're on the boat. They've bluffed their way on. They've met the crew. The captain hasn't yet surrendered, but they have. They have hold it. Uh, holding attempts to hold the seat requires axes or similar applied with vigor. There's a raging barbarian for a short while, um, and it alerted the smugglers. Um, yeah, so that's about to happen as well. 
Um, but they can't see what's going on just now, but they can feel the water starting to fit around their legs, so yes. Um, that's not a secret though, because that's what's happening already. What else have we got? Uh, the secret 90 foot beam, normal uh, stairways leading down, the main deck. They already know that the deck wizard is the medium bad's brother, so that's fine. Uh, forecastle, fine. Is there anything else on the ship that we need to worry about in terms of secrets? I don't think there is. I think we've got everything. Um, lizard folks. Oh, there's a pseudo dragon. Cool. Development. Oh, that's cool. They could actually take the... Huh. That's a secret. Um... Pseudo Dragon Bims Must have a master So they might end up getting an NPC to follow them around if that's the case uh, Hang on a minute If Bims is still alive and the master dies Stops attacking, retreats his nest and only fights Okay, choose the one card. Oh, that's kind of cool. Treasure itself isn't a secret unless it's secret. Unless there's a secret reason for it being there. Treasure isn't a secret. Treasure's treasure. It's a reward. Um, this is the magician, the deck wizard. Is there anything in here that we need to figure out about her? Is there anything given? Again, traps aren't secrets. Traps are traps. They're, there's part of the... Furniture, as it were. Oh, apparently... Okay, I've made Punkata female, but in this sketch, um, it's a male, but I don't care. That's fine. That doesn't bother me. Um, not a big deal. Uh, Grey Captain's Cabin. Is there anything in the Captain's Cabin that we can use as a final C? I just want to quickly scan through this. Documents, okay, documents. Okay, this is the secret about... Yeah, right, yeah, okay. So if they, this is kind of obvious. I'm not necessarily sure that they're going to find out the secret this way. This is how it's written in the story, but they might well get it another way. They might... It might be more relevant to have them... Say they take the lizard folk hostage, tie them up and threaten to burn their toenails or whatever, you know? They might actually want to give that information up in return for their freedom. So it might be relevant that they find it out that way. So it's not necessarily that they have to go into the desk to find that out. So that's fine. Uh, the second drawer is various maps. Blah, blah, blah. There's a secret hatch. Well, again, I mean, I suppose that's kind of a secret. But it's not really. Unless there's anything particularly amazing about that. Yeah, there's traps and stuff. That's fine. They'll expect that. That's not, I'm gonna not gonna turn that. Uh, crew quarters. Nope, there's nothing in there. It looks fairly straightforward. This whole, this whole thing. This boat is fairly straightforward. There's rooms. There are things in them. They can search them. I think we've extracted anything of any major relevance in terms of the plot. Uh, so that gives us secrets to that gives us three secrets to play with in terms of what the lizard people are up to, which is cool. Um, she's female now, absolutely. <laughs> That's how it works. I I don't know where. I think I maybe just looked at the token. I don't know something. I don't. Know. There you go. It's fine. It doesn't make any. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't say that she's the brother of, um, of the the previous uh, Sanballat, Sanballat, uh, who was uh, the guy who was killed in the cave before they stole his boat. 
Um, but he was nasty. He knocked down one of the players. He's, he magic missiled somebody and there wasn't, uh, they weren't very pleased about that. So they, they actually were after revenge. Uh, okay, ah, secret prison cell. Here we go. Um, a dark, cramped area. A dark, cramped area, only four foot wide at most, squeezed into his ship's adjacent, appears to be a holding cell. A slim, humanoid figure cowers in the far corner, chained to the hull. They can't, they can't see at the moment, no, because they're on... Um, they're on. They're in the midst of a. Hang on. Let me get the exact name of what it was that Samira did. Uh, she. You can call and uh, you can create fog cloud. So she cast fog cloud. Um. And if you look at fog cloud. And this, folks, is why I will not be going to Foundry anytime soon. <laughs> I love this too much. Having that information at fingertips is so amazing. Um, it'll come, though. They'll get it. They'll get it. It is a better system in terms of technology behind it, and the tech stack is fantastic. But anyway, by the by, roll 20. Um, fog cloud, yeah, 20 foot radius, sphere of fog. Um, there's concentration. She's not taking any damage yet, so that's fine. Uh, the sphere spreads around corners and the area is heavily obscured. So in terms of D&D, &D, heavily obscured is, um, I think of... Uh, that's where I don't love that, because I think I got that information off something else. Um, but... But just basically, um, the site, it's basically like they're blind anyway. Um, it's pretty much, it's pretty much what's happening. Uh, where, uh, it's conditions, isn't it? Find out what condition our players are in. Here we go. So I think it's the same as being blinded. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're basically a hell of a good area, blocks vision entirely, so it's the same as blind. Yeah, there you go. So that's that's right, it was blinded. That's that's again, you see, during the game, I would not have that crisis. That's too strong a word. I would not have doubted myself during that. During the game, I would have said, you can't see. And if anybody wanted to argue the toss with me, that's fine. They can, as long as it would be done quickly. Because what we're more interested in here is creating, an, what I'm more, most interested in is creating a fun narrative, an exciting narrative with drama and intrigue and peril and danger and letting the characters do amazing things to overcome those situations. So if they're blinded, that's fine. If it turns out later that they're not blinded and, and it splits across two sessions, they're still going to be blinded the next session. Maybe the next time after we, the spells cast, we'll wreck. We'll say, "Oh, this your time. You're not blinded. You're only whatever." Um, so yeah, you get the idea, though. In terms of keeping the narrative going, that's the most important thing to me. I'll make a quick decision. It might not always be the right one, but it will be a decision, and it will be relatively quick. Um, and there might be players screaming at me, or there might be even chat screaming at me. Mondays isn't a stream game, um, but people might be well screaming at me and just saying, "Oh." that's not how the rule works I don't fucking care unless the players pick up on it and want to point out something to me very quickly or unless somebody says that you've definitely got it wrong if I can't find it when I'm searching quickly and I make a quick decision that's what stands um, I, and then afterwards when the game's over and when that scene is done We'll have the discussion in detail. We'll look up the rules. We'll cross-reference websites. We'll talk to other people. We'll watch videos. We'll seek opinion. Fine, but we do it after the game and not during the game. That's that's one of my pet peeves, is stopping the, stopping the story, stopping the action for too long to check the rules. I'd much rather be wrong for a day and the story keeps continuing and we'll work it in. We'll work it in. We'll make it work. Like we had a light cleric who was casting... Fireball, because she was actually a life cleric and not a light cleric or something like that anyway. 
I can't remember exactly what it was, but we got it wrong. So what? A cleric was casting fireballs in the middle of a crazy mage's castle. Yeah, what was the problem with that? It was fun. Everybody enjoyed it. And, you know, it didn't give them that much of an advantage, really. Um, so we let it slide. And then when they walked out of that particular castle, she no longer had those particular spells because we knew we'd made a mistake and we changed it. And we carried on like that. So, yeah, it works. Um, so that's kind of it, it. And then and then as we learn and we learn more rules, we make fewer mistakes about some of the simpler stuff. Mm. So, yeah. Anyway, by the by, we're talking about secrets. That's a bit of an aside about rules there and just my personal pet peeve. I like telling stories. I'm not so worried about rules. Exact divine bookkeeping error. It really was. It was the force uh, of the right. So we've got two more to come up, three more to come up with. Um, when they're back in town, well, that was what we said. We need to figure out. Yeah, we need to figure out. Um, do the townspeople? really know do they already know about these guys i guess they do uh lies near the fish now sophisticated a colony of lizard folk lies near the small fishing town of salt marsh and is purchasing weaponry considered sophisticated by lizard folk standards and has alarmed the salt marsh town council so they already know about them greatly troubled and filled with apprehension uh, the council call an emergency meeting. The this adventure is designed for a group of four to six level third level characters. Oh, they'll get to level after they finish this boat thing. Once they get off the boat, then they'll get to level again. Uh, the characters are not required to finish the sinister secret of Salt Marsh. Probably will. Uh, adventures needed. Judging from the crude map found aboard the smuggler's vessel, from information provided by C. L. Oceanus. Oh, somebody mentioned this here. Uh, Oceanus himself is a good choice of secret in this case as there are multiple locations on the ship where the players can uncover clues to what... Yeah, okay, cool. That's... Yeah. Yeah, cheers for that. He's the prisoner. Or she, depending on how it goes that day. Um, the site of Lizard Folk Colony has been tentatively identified as a coastal promontory adjacent to a small river, the Dunwater, 10 miles south. See, this is the problem I have. This is... This is the problem I have with some of these games, right? Salt Marsh is an up and coming big town with trade and commerce and boats and people riding to it from the catchment area, the fields, the farms. I mean, sure, it's a dangerous place and they have to look out for themselves, but there's industry, there's trees getting felled, there's farms getting laid. How do you think you feed a town as uh, to the size of Salt Marsh, you know? Some of it comes in from the sea. Fine, they're a fishing village. That's great. But they, they're they not going to be surprised. They're just not going to be surprised by finding somebody 10 miles. I and mean, you can walk you can walk 10, 13, 20 miles in a day. Um, boats that are coming up the coast would see potentially. So that, uh, sometimes I need to think about kind of uh, that, that sort of stuff really bugs me. Um. The council considers it essential that a scouting party be sent to reconnoiter the area and ascertain the strength and size of this colony, as well as the intentions of the lizard folk. Okay, that's fair. Um, and obviously the characters are the first choice, because they're the only ones. Uh, the assignment is one of information gathering. Uh, the people of Salt Marsh, and of course the characters, are unaware of the true situation. Okay, so secrets can also foreshadow stuff as well, right? So it might be that we could foreshadow adventures a bit further on too. Um, lizard folk have been negotiating. Um, oh, here we go. The lizard folk have not approached Salt Marsh with an offer to join the alliance because Othacount, the queen, considers humans and other land dwelling races as of little use in a battle to be fought largely underwater. 
So the lizard folk have been invaded by an invasion of Sh Sawagan. Sa Sawagan? Sawagan? I don't know what they are. Secrets of foreshadowing are excellent. You get the thrill of discovery and then more mystery. Yeah, definitely. So, right. Okay, so there's a secret. Sawa wagon. Sahu wagon. <laughs> It's not, it's, is it, that's like that's the that's the way Pokemon are written out. I love it. That's uh, p getting into Pokemon with my son over the past few years, trying to help him to pronounce some of them. I'm looking at that sort of spelling. They're fish people, yeah. Angry fish boys, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, so that's a secret. Lizard folks are annoyed at the angry. Fish boys. Um, of course, we are playing with Ange, and it is useful to have words like angry fish boys. She she does not like complex names at all. So, and it doesn't really matter if I pronounce them differently anyway. The most important thing is I'm consistent, right? Sawajin. 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 Sahuagan. 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 Like Yuan Tai. There's an extra syllable in there you wouldn't put in a native English word. Yeah. I, yeah. If I had more time, I would consider these things, but as we're talking about it, I'm considering it. So thank you very much for that. Normally, I wouldn't care. I really wouldn't. <laughs> I read enough stories to know that as long as you're consistent and you don't say it differently and people are confused and go the, the who? The what? If it changes halfway through the story that's a problem unless of course you want to tell your players that you remember those people that I was calling the Swazian they're actually the Sahuagin they're probably no it's not different enough you get, get, you get my gist you get my gist it doesn't matter as long as it's consistent uh, one of the very early quests Dungeons and Dragons Online involves the Sawagon, and it's a very memorable dialogue line. That's what Borga is thinking of. Cool. Well, there you go. Bloody hell. She was. <laughs> um. Oh, cool. Members of the four races, ambassadors from the Cowlinth, the Lokan, the Lokatha, and the Marfolk are present in the Lizard Folk lair. Oh, cool. That's the secret right there. That's another secret. Um, I mean, that's written out exactly like a secret, so that's fine. Uh, although... Quellent. Um, Lokatha. And Merfolk. A present in the lizard folk layer. Yeah, that's touch typing, guys. That's not a problem. Okay, cool. So that's our secrets. Uh, one more. Um. Oh, this is actually based on an original called Danger at Dunwater um, many years ago. 1982. I was but a young a youngling at that point. I was in, like, primary school. A uh, role-playing lizard folk. <laughs> lizard folk are generally wary of strangers, but are neutral linemen and far from dim-witted or bloodthirsty. Oh, that's kind of cool. I quite like that as a secret, because then people would be able to find that out. Maybe talking to talking to somebody in town, maybe somebody possibly. Oh, there's talk of a bully, a bullywug ambush as well in this. That's cool. Oh, let's have that as a secret. Uh, strange frog-like creatures 
have been seen on route to the yeah north was it south have been seen on the outskirts of salt marsh there we go <laughs> Lizard folk are awkward to play for a period, of, long period of time due to how alien they are. Hang on, let me just adjust my eyelids. <clears throat> Do I look human enough? That's good. Right, I'm fine. That'll be cool. Uh, cool. Cool, so we've got our 10 secrets. 10 secrets that I think the players might discover on Monday, but they might not. They might not get that far. They might not get off the boat, in which case some of these will roll over to next week. Okay. So, this is taking a wee bit longer. That's fine. Fine. Yabbering away. Uh, we've got the secrets. Develop fantastic locations. That's a little bit out of our hands. Um, we've got the town of Salt Marsh. We've got the boat, which is pretty cool. Um, we've got the potential for the lizard layer. Um, we've got the mines. Uh, if they might go to, we've got the tower on the hill up here. Um, let me save those changes because that's the one thing that doesn't happen in Roll20 so easily. Um, and let me, uh, balls, where'd that go? Oh, I'm not, that's fine. Phew. There we go. Um, so that's fine. I, I do also spend time tidying up between missions as well. Got some NPCs prepared. Excuse me. Um, uh, oh, and shout out for my favourite... Uh, hang on, I'll do this over here. Um, Eigengrouse. One of the tools I use extensively for uh, roleplay improvisation is Eigenkraut's Generator. If you haven't already seen it, please do jump over um, and have a look. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm a supporter of them on, on Patreon, have been for a while, um, and uh, it's just a fantastic tool. Uh, this is a beta, so it doesn't always work on uh, this version of Chrome that I'm on. I would use this in Firefox normally. Um, but it gives you, it just gives you NPC generation. Uh, it, it, please ignore the the bugs. Uh, in fact, you know what? It's because I'm I'm using a beta browser and a beta version of this. The two of them don't get on. I know that they play in, work very well with each other in Chrome and Firefox. Um, but yeah, it gives you it gives you loads of cool stuff, and you can follow it. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to show this in a different browser because I'm really not doing it a service here. Hang on a second. Let's go to the non beta version. There we are. Um, so you can start off with the town and you go into the town and you have a look here. You can generate buildings. Uh, <laughs> you can go through into the town there. It generates the town. It gives you a description. It tells you a little bit. You've got it generate. It can generate plot hooks. If you need something, it gives you menus. If you need something, it gives you prices, it gives you lists. Uh, it gives you NPCs in terms of plot hooks. You can chase them down. You can find out what the relationships are uh, between between them. Um, you can save NPCs. You can edit them. You can output them into like JM Binder, Keeper. Um, yeah, you get a little bit of their history. Um, and you can contribute to this as well if you want to. It's on... It's somewhere. The code is somewhere, uh, the Discord is fantastic for it, but I use this all the time in my games, so if you do need a generator on the fly, it does towns, it does buildings, it does boats, it does some fantastic things. Um, well, I maybe not, I maybe don't, I don't, maybe don't give enough to be thanked on the front page, <laughs> but I am there. I do support it. Uh, it's a fantastic tool. I highly recommend it. The, the dev is in Australia, um, but he works super hard. He's a PhD currently. Um, and uh, just, just yeah, absolutely. Absolutely loves it. Does so much. Um, nah, we're cool. 
I just love I love the fact it's so it's so helpful when you just need to go into a town um, generate stuff so anyway I use that as an NPC generator sometimes just when I need a quick and you can save it as well so you can run the saves um, on the browser and you can download the saves and you can transport them across Cube VR great <laughs> you can only want to match your name on it uh, we're good we are good I don't know what the tiers are. I don't. I, I give a couple of quid a month or something. It's not like big money or anything. Um, but I have done for a long time, so it does add up. Anyway, so that's us. Uh, that's us through the um, the secrets and the the fantastic places. We don't have a huge amount of choice unless unless they decide to go off or I embellish slightly, as the whim will take me. Um, if I want to do that, if I want to go through and uh, embellish some of the existing locations, then I can do so. That's not a problem. Uh, but the names are all there. The names have been given. Everything's there. We've got the locations. We know how many we're going to be going through. Uh, we're not going to do 10 because we're not improvising this campaign. Uh, I know roughly how many places are likely to go to. And so some of it will be theatre of the mind. Um, so I'm going to skip that this time. Uh, but that's not to say that I won't actually need to do a little bit more of some of the locations. But here's the checklist anyway. Um, stick figure, tie some locations to the background. Yeah, I'm going to skip this just now because I think it's covered pretty well in the adventure. And if they do decide to go off piste, I have no idea really what they might choose to do. So I think I should just be prepared to improvise that in theatre of the mind. NPCs. So let's have a look at the NPCs. In this adventure. Uh, on the boat currently. Do we have any generated ones? We've got one. I need to generate a few more randoms. Just to keep that sitting there. Uh, so you go goes right. So. Who have we got? NPC. Might actually be easier to look at it on the map. And then we can see who we've got. Okay. We've got Sigmund Snake Eyes. Pirate Captain. Flourish, Charisma Modifier, Damage Rolls for his Longsword Attacks, nice, Sea Legs. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, shape Up, your yeah, dog. I wonder what sort of accent he'll have. I can't remember from the last games, I only hope that the players don't remember either. Whenever a friendly creature within 30 feet, the captain can hear it misses an attack. The captain can yell perilous threats to allow the creature to re-roll the attack. Nice! That's cool. I don't know if I want him to sound like a pirate. I think that's a little bit hackneyed. We'll maybe try something else. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. Anyway, I'm I'm losing it, but we'll, we'll find something. Uh, we've got foul... Frith off, the pirate bosun. Punkta, the pirate deck wizard. Seven crew members and three lizard folk. Lizard folk. Lizard. Lizard folk. Lizard folk. Lizard folk. My talk a little bit like that. I think that would be very hard. So keep going for a long time. But maybe. They sound like that. I don't know. Maybe they do. That's a possibility. Laughs in the goblin. <laughs> uh, so I think that's all really that we're going to see because they're going to be on the boat. When they get back into town, uh, they're going to meet the town council again. Uh, town council consists... That's Sam Bullet. He's dead. They killed him. Um, uh, I think I need to look at the book for this. Yeah, they've done all that. Don't give your PC a voice that grates your throat and then stick to that voice every session. Yeah, no, that's a good point. <laughs> you don't want to ruin your voice. Uh, yeah, I'll need to double check that Salt Marsh NPCs. There's the leader of the. There is the leader of 
town council who is a dwarf and she has been placed there um let me remind myself uh Eliander Fireborn. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has an awesome library. Um, Manistrad Copperlocks, who's the leader. Yeah, she's a dwarven veteran by default, but she runs a mining outfit. And she's also the newly established. She was kind of put in to the council. They met her already. Um... They've met the NPC. There's a whole bunch of NPCs. They've met the NPC from the one of the pubs, Empty Net, Kreb Schenker. They met Kreb Schenker. Oh, and they met Captain Zendros as well. Captain Zendros is a tiefling priest who sailed in on the boat that that brought Samira. And don't do that to do no, don't do that, because the NPCs, because the players just keep talking to them, just to, yeah, yeah, yeah. If they can see you squirming, they'll just wind it in, wind it up, keep going. Um, right. Okay. So we've got the town NPCs, most of the likely candidates. Um, have I got tokens? Do I have? There's Pirate Captain, Pirate Bosun. Uh, there's the pseudo dragon. If they decide to find the pseudo dragon, that's cool. That's like our ones in Orbus. Uh, pirate first mate. Oh, there's Oceanus. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a picture. That's cool. Okay, so we've got Oceanus as well. Right, fine, good. That'll be interesting when they discover the Tritons in the party. <laughs> Sambalay is dead. I don't know why they never bothered putting a space face on them properly. I might look at that, see if I can come up with something myself. Um, yeah, on the town map, when they get back into town, we don't have, like, NPCs. We just describe the characters. So we're doing that kind of theatre of the mind with this lovely map. And that's fine. That, that'll do the job just adequately. We don't need to bother with tokens and stuff for that. So we're sorted. We're sorted for uh, NPCs, I think. So maybe you have to, we've got information about them, we're not having to write them. Uh, checklist, you're likely to prepare some NPCs, we've done that. NPCs we're preparing to drive, yup. We've kept it brief, yup. As other parts of your preparation, be ready to throw away your NPCs, it's fine. They've met the ones they've met, if they meet other ones then they can. Monsters. Okay, monsters. Read up on the monsters. Let's get prepared for the battle that might happen or might not happen. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm just going to quickly review um, the character sheets of some of these guys. Look at their spells. Uh, we talked a couple about a couple about them. They've got multi attack, so that's fine. Hand crossbow, long sword, or a two handed long sword. Um, as a hand crossbow and a one handed long sword. Okay, so two attacks, and then slice. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Punkta. Hang on, there we go. I might... Nah. I'm going to come up with a new picture because I've said that that's the picture. That character is the female sister of Sandblast, so... <laughs> I never, I never looked at the. I just saw the token. Um, I just saw the token at the current size you see on the screen. 
So I just looked at it and assumed it was female with the long hair. And that's what you get for judging. But I don't care. I'll find a picture. It's also not going to be whatever. What is this? Deck wizard, fourth level spellcaster. Okay. That could be nice. Gust of wind. The other problem with doing this um, in the clicking on character sheets is sometimes the chat shows um shows up what you've uh what you've done which is quite funny no mish knows yeah it's fine it's gonna it's not gonna be that it's gonna be a female whatever sander blatt was human i think um what spells have we got? Anything there that looks... We've got friend, Ray of Frost, fine. Prestidigitations, fine. Mage Hand. Sky Self could be useful. Fog Cloud, we just used that. <laughs> Witch Bolt's nice. That's not one I'm altogether familiar with. If, yeah. A beam of crackling blue energy lances out toward the creature within range. 30 foot. Make a ranged spell attack against that creature and hit 1d12 damage. On each of your turns for the duration. Oh, nice. It's a dot. Okay. And it, another D12 gets added for everything above first slot. Yeah. That looks cool. So that could be fun to play with if they get... Um, we've got Melf's Useless Arrow. Um... Uh. <laughs> It's something, I suppose. Uh, Misty Step's good for getting out of trouble. Mage Hand could be fun. Ray of Frost can be okay, can't it? If you cast it at higher levels, it can do a reasonable amount of damage. Oh, but only if you get to five. Oh, okay. Uh, cantrips. Friends, Mage Hand. What does... What's Friends as opposed to Charm? Advantage on charisma checks. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay. So you cast it on yourself. Um, and then you use that just to get advantage on charisma checks. Uh, that's kind of cool. Right, that's probably the most interesting character. I think the rest of them are just holding scimitars and crossbows and stuff. Banditos, scimitar, light crossbow, uh, fairly average stats, 11 hit points, um, four, 1d6 plus 1 damage, 1d8, but they're only level, these guys are only level 2, so, <laughs> uh, there's lots of those guys, um, I think the only one we've not looked at is um lizard folk in all my dealings with the lizard folk i was never able to tell what they were thinking their reptilian eyes belied no hint of their intentions i gave them supplies they gave me the willies a merchant's account of his experience with the lizard folk tribes of the lizard marsh He painted the miniature, it looks 100% like that. <laughs> cool. Territorial xenophobes. Fiercely territorial. Uh, no notion of traditional morality. They find concepts of good and evil utterly alien. They're truly neutral creatures. They do whatever it takes to survive. Um, anybody that enters their territory is fair game. Stalked, killed and devoured. Uh, occasions might arise when lizard folk will form alliance with their neighbours. Well, you are in such an occasion. These lizard folk usually learn firsthand that humans, dwarves, halflings, and elves can sometimes prove helpful or trustworthy. Okay. And once they have forged ties with outsiders, they are steadfast and fierce allies. Could be useful. They respect and fear magic with religious awe. That could also be useful to know. Uh, 
Um, I guess the Triton would know about lizard folk from the outset. I don't see that being an issue. Um, don't see that being an issue. Dragon worshippers. Okay. Oh, righty. All righty, right, we're doing, oh, we're way over time, right, way <laughs> over time. Yeah, this is not, I don't normally go into quite as much yabbering, I suppose it's what's kind of taking it. I just normally look at it, read it, and then get on with it. Uh, okay, common speaking, list. I've got a bit of learning to do there, I think, just because it's a new thing, I'd quite like to have that a little bit prepped. I'm not going to sit and read all that, but I shall make note um, in my notes that I should uh, read over the lizard folks' descriptions and get my head around it. There you go. I'll do that before... That's fine. A little bit of extra. I am have time for that. Scaly aesthetic, yeah. Um, right, in terms of their actual capacity, in case they just need to go straight into a battle and they don't need to talk about their backstories, uh, armor class 15, 22 hit points, they can swim and on land at same speed. Ah, they're holding clubs, they can use ranged, they've got a spiked shield, nice. Two attacks. Wow. This is quite a tough bit of combat, actually. Huh. If they just went pure murder hobo on this boat, they'd probably get owned. Well, there'd certainly be some... They would. I mean, these guys only have 11 hit points, so that's not a huge deal, is it? Uh, Oceanus, let's have a look. The sea elf had been tasked with investigating. Okay, that makes sense. Oceanus is a smart and resourceful elf who is more than willing to join adventurers who have brave hearts and good intentions. Uh, that depends. I think these guys do, generally. They seem pretty brave. Uh, okay. Aquin, okay. That's interesting. I'm pretty sure Samira talks. Aquin. Um... Oh, Samir doesn't talk any languages. Well, that's a bit of missing. Pretty sure Tritons. Hello? Triton. Languages. Primordial and, okay, common and primordial. Right, hang on. Um. Uh, primordial. There you go. Oh no, it was there. Oh my goodness. Idiot. Right, I've done that. I did it twice. It was already there. I'm getting tired. That's fair. <laughs> it was already there. I've added it again. Anyway, it's fine. That's good. I've learned it. Take the, take the positive out of that. Okay. Doesn't speak Aquin. Uh, right, that's kind of that side of it. Read up on the monsters, we've done that. There's not going to be any fighting in town unless... No, it's not really. 
Um, okay, magic items. Loot. There's loot mentioned. I'll figure that out as I go. There's loot mentioned. Uh, there is definitely loot mentioned on the boat, isn't there? I saw some. The loot wish list is a good one, though, because if you actually know what your players are working towards and what they would like, it's worth thinking about that and knowing if they want something like a new bow or a new sword or whatever it is, and you can actually tie that into to what they're looking for. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we're not looking at that. We're looking at this. We're looking for loots. What could they find? So there's a cargo here, potentially. Uh, there is a chest here. With a pack of dice, some books, playing cards. Um, there's treasure here. Dex is trapped. Uh, triggered. The trap swings a sh short scything blade from its bottom, threatening any creature within five foot of the front of the chest. Nice. Dex 13, save and throw. 2d6 slashing damage. Half. Chest contains electrum ingots worth a hundred EP each. Uh, that's a mistake, isn't it? The, the ten electrum ingots worth ten hundred. Yeah, that's not right. Uh, electrum is worth five silver. Oh, they're ingots. See, I'm getting tired. Ingots worth 100 EP each. So uh, that's like... 20... 20 silver pieces? 10 would be 50, yeah. This is part of the payment made by lizard folk to smuggle. Okay. What other bits of treasure is there? Two desk drawers are locked. First draw contains two potions of healing and the, ch the key that unlocks Oceanus in area 14. And then there's a crudely drawn map. And alright, oh the bearskin rug covers that treasure. Okay, so I think we've got an idea of treasure. Ten electron pieces per ingot. Um, no, ten tens definitely a hundred. But electrum is worth five silver pieces. So it would be worth 50 silver, right? It's getting late. <laughs> this is the other thing that happens at tables. Uh, but of course, when I'm a DM, I usually have a bit more time to sit and read. So that's cool. Right, so I think we've got all the treasure out of that. Um, I'm familiar with it. I'll probably retain some of that information for for Monday. Oh, and the reward, of course, that they get. 400 gold pieces for completing the mission. Which is kind of treasure. But not any magical things. Is there pi Healing potions are probably quite valuable at this point. Um, but looking at, at what it says here, the, the loose wish list. And also choosing uh, items randomly. Um... 50p, 50 per ingot. Is that what it is? Uh. Oh yeah, they're worth 100 each. Right, yeah. So it's actually 1,000 EP in total. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, that's not bad. That's the price of weapon purchasing, see? Guess it pays to be an arms dealer. Even if you can't sleep at night for fear of being... Anyway, I have no idea what it's like being an arms dealer. I once thought one of my friend's dads was an arms dealer. He never really told us what he did, and he had lots of money. So we just joked he was an arms dealer. Probably worked for the military or something. So maybe it wasn't that far off. Um, okay, so that is, that's loots, magic rewards. I think that's as much as we're going to get. I could roll on a table. Oh, sometimes, 
sometimes what I do is um uh sometimes what I use is uh Donjon's random treasure generator like this um and you know pick the the name of that and i get the players to roll i just say kind of roll d10 or roll two d10s or whatever and then i'll pick the items that correspond to that for a bit of random chance um and yeah 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 exactly yep yep in water deep i remember that i used that in water deep as well <laughs> It looked cool. Uh, I remember when we did Water Deep, I got icons for each of the coins as well from somewhere, and I remember that one. And it looked pretty cool. Um, right. So, in terms of prep for Monday, in terms of prep for Monday, um, I think we're pretty good. Uh, we've got the strong start. We've got some potential ideas for scenes. We know who the characters are. We've got some secrets and clues. The fantastic locations we've kind of edged over because we're doing a prescript, you know, scripted uh, adventure. Um, Miss Sonnet, no, you shouldn't. Well, actually, we've just come to an end, so it depends. It depends when you've. It depends when you just joined us. Did you just join us just now? Yeah, you, you're fine. You're fine now, actually, as it happens. Uh, you're totally fine now. We just finished. We just finished. <laughs> um, so we've done that. I'll stop talking about things. We've done all these things. We've looked at all of that. We've followed the guidance. And then roughly 30 minutes to an hour before the game, I will review my notes, which I'm going to write up a little bit better. Um, but that's obviously because we're doing this adventure. Um, yeah, so that's... That's it. Um, that's the... That is... Hang on a minute. OBS. Uh, there we go. Ping. That is the uh, the the use of of the the structure, and it and it just gives it it gives confidence using a, a, a familiar routine when you're um, prepping. It stops any panic setting in. Um, for me, um, it keeps me calm, it keeps me confident, and it gives me a good starting point before I go in. And uh, some some games are better than others. Sometimes the players notice if you're down, sometimes they don't. All of that is fine. Uh, but I do find that using something like Sly Flourish's methodology, just going through that, peace of mind, I know I've got the basics covered, and now anything that I do between now and Monday is a bonus. Um, okay, so we spent an hour and a half on that. It isn't that it doesn't usually take that long because I was stopping talking and because we were going through stuff. Uh so what I'm gonna do now I didn't really think this through. <laughs> hey, no, it's hey, you don't come on you don't come on Twitch and not talk to people. That's exactly why. It was great. No, you did. I really enjoyed it. Thank you guys. No, 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 Jess, Jess, please stay because we're now going to move off Monday's game and we're going to move on to Saturday's game next Saturday. So you're welcome to stay. Uh, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. Let me stop this session just now. Uh, and only just because we can separate the VODs more easily. And, and um, I'll stop and restart. I'll quickly change the name. Uh, we're still in session planning, um, but we're also we're also on campaign review as well. So I think what we'll do is a very short stream, just for just for half an hour, um, and we'll have a look over some of the videos um, of the Infinite Monkey Tales campaign that we were on Saturdays, which is sticking up, um, <laughs> which is sticking up um, on uh, back its head back up again. But unlike previous times, when we play on Saturday, we're only going to be playing this game once every three weeks. We're going to be rotating it with Mutants and Masterminds, which is happening on this Saturday, and we're going to be doing Blades in the Dark. So it means that I actually, rather than having one week to prep, I've got three weeks to prep, which I'll still be following the same method, 
but I'll be able to put in a bit more time with post uh, with pre-production as well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Right, I'm going to quickly end this session, which was the Salt Marsh planning session, using Sly Flourish's Lazy DM method, and we're going to do a quick review of the campaign that we run on Saturdays, which has been called The Lost uh, thus far. Be right back. <laughs>